interesting time in history um, where we need to go hybrid. And no longer are we officially in a time of pandemic, but we do have this opportunity to work at home as well as here in person at the public library. So we are gonna continue with the same format pedagogical format today where I am going to show you a slideshow of an artist's work. We're going to look at and discuss this person's work. And then I'm going to give you some options for art that you can do yourselves, either at home or here in class. Today, our artist of interest and focus is a person named Marco Da Silva. I have chosen him because we are in Gay Pride Month and Mr. De Silva is gay. He is a Brazilian American multimedia artist. And good, bad news, I have almost zero information on his background, except the fact that he was born in Brazil. Oh, no, correction, born and raised in New York City, of Brazilian ancestry. Not off to the best start this morning, but at least I corrected that error. So I'm gonna start by sharing the video that I created, which I do not have open yet. So we're gonna close the share box. I'm going to open the slideshow. There we go. Nope, nope, I did that wrong. Okay, folks at home, can you see? Yes. Good, folks here, I'm pretty sure you can see, yes. So I'm gonna make it full screen. Please remember to mute, folks at home, thanks so much. And here we go. So Mr. De Silva is multimedia, but primarily painting and drawing. And his work, and this is a direct quote now from his website, his work integrates a personal symbology amidst explorations of his multiracial queer and manic experience. So the manic experience is and I'm going to talk about that in a moment. The interesting thing that I find about his work are the combination of shapes and things that he chooses to depict in his work. For example, in the middle, it looks like a regular. Can't hear you, Liz. Huh. My volume seems to be on high on my laptop. So can you hear me better now? Are you muted? Ha ha, I don't know. I don't think so. I, hear I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, sorry, folks at home, can you hear Liz? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, yes. So it's maybe just one person. Stephanie, can you hear me now? I think, Stephanie, it may be something with your computer. If you could check to make sure your volume is all the I way. I can hear you now. Hear okay, good. Um. 
But then surrounding this place setting in the middle are things that seem to be much more personal, perhaps mythological, cultural, things connected with nature, part of his personal symbology, as he puts it. So Mr. De Silva experienced a manic episode in June 2013, in which he experienced feelings of grandeur, prophetic destiny, and extreme joy. And then this episode was followed by a subsequent feeling of depression. This overall experience facilitated the birth of a meticulous painting process, which De Silva employed for much of the latter 2010s. And it enabled De Silva to begin to blend the use of house paint, limited color, and Sharpie markers through a pop context to canvas and other surfaces. I mean, I guess it behooves me to wonder what that is on the plate in the middle of the composition, but I don't wanna dwell on it too long. It certainly has meaning if it's what I think it is. I think it's poop. No, see, I looked at it and it was not. What, what do you think, Alice? Tears coming out. Oh, you think it looks like an eye, okay. And there's definitely what looks like tears. Oh, I like your interpretation much better. Once again, we don't have the artist here to help us interpret, so we have to use our imaginations. It kind of looks like a bleeding heart. I see the eye, but it's like his hands. All right, Lauren, it could be a heart. Did everybody hear that? Lauren said it looks like a heart, a bleeding heart. Yeah, he tilts tilt it to the side. Yeah, it's it's tilted in an interesting direction. Well, I think the I think the hand throws her hand underneath in the in the, the leafy um, pattern. Absolutely, guys. Let let's let Jane speak because I I can only hear one person at a time. Thanks. It reminds me a little bit about the of the some of the images where the artist was doing like architectural. I mean, there's something kind of. Oh yeah, all, wait till you see the next one. But there's something sort of all encompassing as if this represents everything. Cycle of life, you know, the, the hierarchies, the crown, animals, and then an angel figure at the top. Uh huh. And then sort of setting the table of life and then the cycle coming back around with tears or rain and I don't know it it feels very eerie but kind of looks like life cycles to me okay cool I don't know folks at home if you heard that Jane was saying this feels like some kind of cycle of life imagery and that some of the symbols represent that cycle and there's also a skull. So for me, there's like a birth death yeah. cycle thing going on here. And there's also a lot for me of Latino imagery kind of, I don't know too much about Brazilian um, traditional culture and, and tribal groups that may be living in Brazil but I see things that remind me a bit of some of the Mexican uh, tribal groups, a little bit of Maya and maybe Aztec or Toltec. I think about Brazil, two are two different cultures. Very, very different. And it, within Brazil, Daniel, you're absolutely right. There are multiple cultures. 
And I don't know very much about any of those within Brazil. But I'm saying some of it does remind me of Mexican. Yes. Liz? It's wait, wait up. Sorry, Heather is trying to say something. Oh, okay. Oh, it does. The Brazilian flag has a diamond shape. Yes. But the colors aren't right. The colors are completely different from the Brazilian. But the Brazilian flag has the stripe top and bottom, the broad stripe across the middle, and the diamond in the middle. There's no stripes? Okay, wrong on that one. Okay, the, so the Brazilian flag has the diamond in the middle. And I, but I want to emphasize the fact that Daniel is absolutely right that the tribal groups, the traditional cultures in Brazil are very different from the cultural groups in Mexico. You're absolutely right. Liz, uh, oh, it's yeah, Susan. Go ahead. Susan, no. go ahead. The hands are made up of cowrie shells, which are Af of African symbolism. Yeah. And there's a large group of, of Afro-Brazilian um, um, people, you know, in, yes. in that area. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm not sure if this is true, but I think the largest slave population in Latin America is in Brazil. So more... Africans were brought to Brazil than any other country in South America. But you need to check on that. But there mm -hmm. is a large African population. And those are cowrie shells in the hands. All right, let's go to the next picture. This is great conversation. Though. Amazing connection. And then this mask, too. Sorry. The green mask on the right looks kind of African to me as well. Yep, 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 yep. And then the, the hat at the upper right, the orange hat looks kind of like a Royal Canadian Mountie yeah. kind of thing. Or the gaucho, the ranch, yeah. the rancher's hat. Can I just ask what, what people think that green squiggly thing is on the left. I think it's a snake. I think. What do other people think? Oh, wow. I Where? thought it was a mouse. <laughs> a, a mouse. Okay. <laughs> a monkey. Well, there's a, there's a monkey on the upper right and on the upper left. There's a, a pink monkey with the green tail, and then there's an orange monkey with a blue and white striped tail. Oh, I, I thought the monkey. one on the upper right looked like a mouse. Oh, okay. <laughs> Again, it's a, it's a digital reproduction, so it's not very clear. All right, let's go to the next picture, because I want to have time for us to do our own art. I love art that creates so much conversation, though. This is, this is great. All right, so one thing that you're not getting a sense of from the first few pictures that I'm showing is the incredible texture in his work. And I'm gonna be showing you some close-ups in the following slides to help you see that because texture is gonna be really important in our own work today. And texture is very important to Mr. De Silva's or Marco De Silva's work. He's had quite a few exhibitions in New York. He has a working studio in Brooklyn. Um, he received, want to get this right. Uh, he was an artist in residence in 2021 at the Art Center at Governor's Island, showed his work there. In 2018, he traveled to Rio de Janeiro to explore his Brazilian heritage. And the experience was translated into a series of murals exhibited in 2019 
at Manhattan's Abrams Art Center entitled M Casa Brazilian Cutlery. The collection invoked Brazilian spirituality and cultural something, there's a word missing, through color palettes, textures, and shapes, and particular use of bright neon color. Oops, uh, Robin needs to be readmitted, Laura, and I can't seem to get my cursor to work. Thank you. So definitely bright color hitting you in the face, primary and secondary both. Talk about architectural, as Jane mentioned earlier, these are more like sculpture than paintings. I mean, they, but they hang on the wall. You can get a sense of the, the textural feel. These are very bumpy. I, I could find really no uh, explanation as to how he creates the texture in some of these. There is one picture where you will see how the texture is created, but I think it's different in every one of his pieces. I personally love this one. I, I'm a big fan of spirals, so. I think it's great, I love it. Why, Stephanie? Why, why do you like it, it? I don't know, it just hit me. The colors, the shape, the way it makes you look up. It's just amazing. The symbols. So he did a whole series of images that are the Empire State Building. This is one of them. And this is interesting. They also represent former lovers. These are symbols of the Empire State Building as well as ex-lovers. He also reimagined tarot card symbols. So that explains some of the symbols in that first painting we looked at. I love the shapes in this. The use of white in this is pretty powerful and striking. Liz, I'd love to see what's actually on the top. It's yeah, hard. it's very long and thin. I'm guessing it's either a wooden dowel or something metal. And then there's all kinds of gigoth kinds of things. Yeah. Be interesting to see what they yeah, actually are. I don't are. know if, if he, he made them or collected them. It's hard to tell. Right. And there's so little information. I where Lauren, if you're researching and you can find out for us, that'd be great. You're always into the research. So. What, what can I look up? I'm sorry. And no problem. If if you're looking for more information on Marco de Silva and you find out if he uses found art object okay. or if he makes his own additions to these pieces that'd be fun okay you got no, it pres no pressure only if you want to okay so this is a close-up of one of these pieces look at how bumpy it is i don't know how he achieves this effect i did do some research to try and find out i couldn't find anything um it could just be the way he applies the house paint. Remember, it said he uses house paint. But at my thought is he must be mixing it with something like glue or or he's like cornstarch, maybe. What's that stuff you use with acrylic paint? I don't know if it's just acrylic medium. paint. But is he mixing it with medium or gel? Could be mixing it with some kind of medium or gel to make it thick. It could be the surface that he's painting on. It looks like it could be rubber or, or bumpy plastic. Laura, what were you were waving? It could be the surface of tile. I don't know, Jane, you had your hand up. I don't know whether it's actual physical relief or is it I don't. I could like I said. To my eye, and I'm not wearing the glasses, to me, it could be just he's painted the texture, the, the shadow into 
image. Yes, but I don't think so. No. I don't think so. That would be extraordinary. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> that would be right. mega impressive, but I don't think that's okay. what this is. <laughs> yeah. It's not ceramic. I know that this is on canvas. So that was another thought I had that maybe it was clay and he built up the surface with clay and fired it and then glazed it. No, this is paint on canvas. Is this the entire image? No, this is a close up. This is a detail. Good question. All right, let's keep going. It's a close up of this. This is one of the Empire State Building series. They're nice. Who said that? Why do you think it's nice? Was it you, Eileen? Absolutely, it's apparent, isn't it? You don't even need me to tell you. Oh, Heather found it. Oh. And paint it over it. Nice. All right. Plastic rhinestone. Wow. Sounds like a recycling project. I don't have the dimensions either. Like I said, I had a hard time finding. This was all I found. Even on his website, I couldn't find much. Uh, Laura. Yeah, so they're they're tall, but um, not very wide. Of course, it's the Empire State Building. All right, let's keep going. I love this. So this is a close up of one of his cutlery, Brazilian cutlery pieces. Definitely pop art. We've talked a lot about pop art in this class. You can see the popular imagery. This is a lot like we were talking about Larry Rivers and Roy Lichtenstein, Andy Warhol. Great composition. This is a detail of a larger work, though. Love the black outlining, very flattened, comic booky kind of style. Fantastic use of color in this. I'm thinking it's fried eggs. What do you think? Yes, and the fork on the other. It's part of that cutlery series. Brazilian cutlery and definitely glitter creates the texture in this one. I don't think we have to look that one up. All right, I'm going to just whip through these now. Shout out any comments or feelings you might have. Because now, so this one, as um, Susan mentioned earlier, these are cowrie shells, which are a huge part of African culture. Many African tribal groups um, use cowrie shells either in religious ritual or as money. Cowrie shells are frequently found to have been used as money or in trade or in decoration. Um, so I, this could be in reference to the fact that Brazil has African roots. Many people in Brazil have African roots. All right. So he also did a series of self-portraits. This is one of many in an installation. This is kind of just part of a larger piece that I'm going to show you next. I kind of like these different kinds that, of color. I'm sorry to interrupt. It says that his work is very mythological. He likes the fantastic kind of appearance. Um, and I feel like you really see it in this one. Yes. This definitely has that 
dream surreal imagery. He's floating in the clouds. And this may be one of the first ones he did after he had that um, manic experience that played such an important role in his work. And here it is part of the installation. Too bad it's so blurry, but I really like this piece. This may be the last one in the slideshow, let's see. No, this, I threw this one in to show you that his style varies. It's very, very different from the others. Has a completely different feel, right? I get a little Keith Herring. Not exactly, but like with the pop of the neon yeah. color and like this, the ink. Yes. Maybe. And interesting that you mentioned Herring because Herring also was very influenced by African patterning, textile patterning and African uh, imagery. So that's kind of a cool connection. I find this one a little disturbed, a lot disturbing actually. All right, the next one may be the last one. Like a fever dream. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, th I believe this is the last one. I threw it in just to show you how different some of his imagery is from the others. The others were so controlled, right, compared to this kind of, this work is much more abstract. I don't even know if these are earlier or later works. But I, I wanted to use this artist because he's new and up and coming. And I think he's somebody we should keep an eye out for, Marco da Silva. And here we go with instructions for our project today. If I can stop the share, I'm trying to locate my cursor. It is playing. I don't know, Laura, can you help me stop the share? Sorry, folks at home and here, this seems to be a new problem that I am facing. Maybe I can just hit escape. There we go, okay. And where did my Zoom go? Here we are. All right. So we can close this. All right. So again, a reminder, I am not an art historian, nor am I an art critic. I just want to expose folks to these artists to get you primed and psyched for what I have brought for you to do today. So you're going to have some choices. Uh, those of you who are here, I have brought acrylic paint in primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. You can use them straight out of the bottle or you can mix. I invite you to think about doing geometric abstraction. So work in shapes, circles, squares, diamonds, triangles, etc. You can mix colors, of course. I always encourage folks to experiment with mixing colors. I did not bring white or black. You can always use water to thin the colors or blue. Blue is a perfect color. Didn't I say blue? Red, no, yellow, and blue. Green. Green. I said green? Forgive me. Red, yellow, and blue are the three primary colors that I brought. I'm in La La Land today. So you can use them straight out of the bottle or you can mix to make any colors that you want. Um, I'm also gonna do a demonstration of a way that you can create texture you can do something called collagraph printing to create a rubbing using pastels and cutting and pasting to create a surface that is textured. 
And I'm gonna do a demonstration for this. And I recommend that everybody watch. Those of you at home, obviously I can't force you to watch, but it is a fun way to create. And Laura is going to help us get set up here so that everyone can see me do it. Any questions? If you want to do this kind of printmaking, you could also call it a way to do rubbings. If you want to do it, here are the things that you will need. You'll need scissors. You'll need scrap paper. You'll need drawing paper, as well as some kind of thin like photocopy paper. Those of you who are here in class today, I'm gonna to ask you to wait until I am back there to show you the three different kinds of paper that you'll need. You're gonna need a glue stick if you're doing this kind of printmaking or rubbing, you can call it what you wanna call it. And let's go to work unless there are questions, of course. Uh, tracing paper won't work, Lauren, sorry. You need something like photocopy paper if you have it. Do you have any of that at home, Lauren? Even if it, you know, look in your recycling box and see if you have something that you got in the mail that's been photocopied, that'll work. Use the reverse side with no print on it. Any other questions? Let me look in the chat. What, for... what was the printing called? The name of the printing process? I call it collagraph printing. Collagraph. It's, yeah. it's a way to print by using texture. See, it's spelled, I'm gonna put it in the chat box. Um, Holograph, C-O-L-L, uh, it might be C-O-L-L-O-G-R-A-P-H or C-O-L-L-A-G-R-A-P-H. My brain obviously is not functioning totally this morning, so try it both ways. All right, folks here in class, follow me. And folks at home, be patient while we're setting up the camera for the demo. First thing I want to show you today is this kind of paper. This is scrap paper, all different sizes. This is what I want you to use. Okay. This is the paper for cutting. I also need this. Paper of all different odd sizes. This is for cutting up for doing the polygraph print. This is the paper that you use for your base. Larger paper can be the base. You can glue onto this. And then the very white. Smaller paper, this is obviously the photocopy paper. The finished part is going to go underneath. But then you can use this, cut this up and collage it onto a larger sheet of paper at the end. Um, sheet, and I can show you guys that is the color. It's very simple. Laura, when you're ready, you can bring Yeah, I can put up the screen. Watch it on the screen. Yes, yeah. It's a cat. Yeah, it is. Oh, is there an insert you can use? An insert. Yes. You're shaking. around the 
Yeah, so I guess you guys can stay in your seats. Folks at home, can you hear me? Are you? So, scrap paper. And remember, I said, let's think about doing geometric extraction, if you recall from other lessons. Just think about shapes and the blue sticks. A brand new blue stick, a brand new pencil. So you're going to basically build up a surface. That's what polygraph Folks at home, you can see. Not really thinking too hard about where I'm going to put things because I want to do this as quickly as you can draw your shapes with pencil first before you glue your shapes down. You want to play around with where you're going to put them so you can see what your composition is going to look like. But you want to vary the size of your shapes. types of shapes that you're going to use. But I love this kind of project because all you need are everyday things. Paper, glue, scissors, and else if you have them you can do it with charcoal you can do it with pencil not colored pencil but nice soft number two pencil you can do it with graphite i'm only going to cut out a few more pieces and glue them down so you get an idea of what this is going to achieve you can really do a lot more Once you've created a composition that you like, take the thin paper and you lay it over the top. You take a soft material like pastel or charcoal, graphite, pencil, and you love. And your shapes should emerge. Use multiple colors like orange and blue and colors. And you can work from there. Take colored pencil, you do detailing, you do outlining, you can have a lot of fun with this technique. You have a large piece of paper here, so you can do more. And you can create more prints that you can then cut out and collaborate. 
collage onto another piece of paper. And it's endless. The possibilities are endless for this kind of brain. I thought of this because Mr. De Silva's work is so incredibly textual. This is an opportunity for you to really explore all kinds of textual approaches. Any questions? And if you just want to do it in black and white, charcoal is a great way to do it. It's just wonderful. And you can add touches of red, touches of white. Fun. Brand new glue stick <laughs> like this. <laughs> it looks like it's the name. One piece at a time, big girl. One piece at a time. And with the pastels, uh, let's limit to three colors at a time. Is that fair? Colors. Okay. It's maybe you want to. Okay. Okay. Good. Right. And this you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Don't love it. I just want to make it. Okay. Because I think next year, your five, you have similar things like Barney Bob. Honor Gay. And there are a lot of very famous, well known people. Well, we got to do lessons. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. In a minute, I'm going to return these things to the back. Thank you. And there's always the option if you want to copy uh, Margaret's work. I can bring it to just me. And here is the scrap paper here. Cut and use as much of it as you can. Oh, some of these are working. Yes, this is the paper you're not supposed to do. Yes, what we glued. Good break. It's very good. Okay, folks at home, here comes an image by Marco da Silva. Which one do we want to look at? I like the fried egg picture. You like that one? I think it's my favorite. I didn't hear any no's. Oh, I didn't open it. Sorry, give me a minute. Okay, everyone at home, can you see the fried egg painting? Is this the gallery view? Yes. Everyone at home is somewhere else. 
Lauren, can you see the image? Okay, thank you. Lauren is back. I'm so happy. Yeah, it's starting to get cold again. Yes, you can try double decking. I don't know if it's going to work. Try it. It's not. Sally's using a ruler. Why not closer? It's hair. Hairing will make nice edges. Be Uh, the big the big sheet. Very good. I got the one. You know what I recently learned? It's really up to Aboriginal people in Australia. I lost the style of the moment.
Look at this. Oh, wow. wow. That's great. Very strong and striking. It's a powerful technique. Have you ever done this before? So they use this white pencil. But I would leave it on top of this. When, when you're doing the details, I would not remove it from what you have underneath, although now it's too late. But you want to have that textural 3D thing. I shouldn't mention that before, forgive Hello. me. When you're, when you're working with the pencil, if you want to get that. Love the black and white. So we're already producing here. No rush, folks at home, take your time. Everybody has their own style and speed. It's one of those questions, I don't know if you've experienced it in your art practice. People always ask me, how long did it take you to make that? That's always the first thing I get asked when people come to my studio. Wow, I love that. How long did it take you to make it? I, I don't know why that's important to people. They want to know how the how the skill Yes, but I think, Daniel, it's more people want to know how quickly you made it. They seem to be impressed by speed. For example, in animation, you need to do in animation, you are in a deadline, so you need to work faster. Yeah, right. Or the faster you do it, the better you are. It's, I don't know. Um, oh, Stephanie had to leave. I missed that. Sorry. Oh, and you know what? I think it's summer. What time is it? I was going to do the happy dance. Yes, it's summer. Woohoo. Happy summer, everybody. Those poor people in that submersible. We still haven't found them. Yes, see, it works. Try and use, oh, this is oil pastel. So oh. this this does work, but if you want to do the pencil over the top, you're not going to be able to do that. One thing you can do, now, mm -hmm. Judy, is you can actually draw. Oh, man. Very nice. Ooh, you mentioned it. Scrape away. You're never going to get to your circle with with acrylic and you don't want white. You like those. Yeah, the 
which is terrific. Now take a big white paper station. Just be careful with the pastels. If they get dropped on the floor, it's very messy. Especially somebody that steps on it. Drop it, pick it up. That's what. There is so much. Yours is beautiful too. Yours is beautiful. Yours is beautiful too. And this is going to show you something else. Beautiful blue on this. Beautiful blue. Are you going to go on this one? No. You have to go to work. Are you going to stick in the Then you can stick it either. Okay. Please don't take A white colored pencil that you see.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Unless you're going to do several small sections. But I only got one. But this came out well. The oil pastels work well. But I don't think it's the word. I miss it mostly in the past. It's a very good Why did you put 
Yeah, now you're resting. You don't need so much. You don't need so much. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 So wonderful, it's lost in all that. What I would recommend is you know, even more getting a lot and you do what you saw. Oh, this goes by mixing idiom. She's using paint on top of the rubbing, not. And so is Judy is using pastel as well as oil pastel. And she's working on her holograph paint. 
when I took printmaking, and when I had the opportunity to do it in a real printmaking studio, I love my telegraph plates. That's what we call the thing that you glue your stuff on, we call it a plate. I love that more than I like the prints that I'm making. I don't know, both are kind of like kind of the same. Uh, one time I want to make it more creepy, the other one just the shape. Okay. Let's say that I follow. Stand up. Folks at home, we good. Is anybody left at home? I've been neglecting you. Everybody's gone. No, there are still six people here. Why can't I see you? You good, Lauren? Robin, you got a question. Can you unmute? No, you're good, okay. Susan, you good? Okay, cool. I know Stephanie had to leave. Okay. Liz, that makes me feel, do you feel that sometimes the art represents the personality of people? Colors? No, art. Why Lisa? Nice job today. Mm -hmm. See you next week. Do you think that art is uh, of course? Right? I think art comes from our hearts and soul and our brain. That's actually kind of scary because that's how we I years ago I went to the Museum of Death in California and I'll see some of those oh it doesn't it doesn't make you know that it makes you sad it's funny how some of those serial killers were excellent artists, and that's kind of scary. Well, hmm. I'm not sure how to respond to that. Um, Go ahead and make something horror related. That kind of scares me. I guess it should be scary. Yeah, and I, 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 I,
Not to lose your shades in the middle. Shoes are snuck. Yeah, you're losing your, your shades in the middle. Do that. This one is this, not the white of it. Uh, try not to wear the beads. So you can go back in and define this.
Are my homies working hard? Um, another couple minutes, and I'll see if anybody at home wants to share. I call it horror for the sky. Oh, this one is not a short. Oh. I call it horror for the sky. You're looking at the down. At first, I thought it was going to be an alien invasion, but then I was a to put an airplane and then I dropped it in a bog. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to make it a little bit political. Wow, I tried it. 
this one sucks. for sharing, but so many people seem to be, oh no, it's not. All right, folks at home, anybody want to share? 
folks here are still in process, but it doesn't mean we can't share. Robin, you ready? Hold on. Okay. Um, oh, wait. I took. Yeah, sorry. Are you talking? I'm um, Okay. I, I read what you had written, what we were going to do today, oh, which I was changed. find objects from a yeah. So so that's what I did. And these are the objects that I use okay. because I got them in Mexico years ago. And I would always been fascinated by these the the Mexican, the the man in that position. Can you see them? I don't know if yes. you can see it. Yes, very well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that, okay. And then my brother had made a a, a pottery piece. You're not going to be able to see it all, but anyway, it was an interesting thing with a with a cactus and a little cave on it. So here's this crazy painting, and I mean it. I was using cray paws. I don't use cray paws. I don't. I don't even know how to use them. This is but I so drew those beautiful. Figures. Look at this, everybody. Well, that's Crepas are what and, I call oil pastels. Okay, and I was on on um, watercolor paper. So anyway, sure. that's what I made for today. Yeah, that was my original intent was to have us do still lifes. I can show you what I did last week. See, Robin reads my yeah, direction. so. <laughs> she <gets> my email. <laughs> if, if, if I were in the class with you, I would have done what all you are doing, and it would have been great. Do, do you want to see what I did last week? Absolutely. Do you have time? Show it, show it, show it. This is, um, I started I started with a box and material. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. It, wow. But it ended up being, I don't know if you can see it in the Wow. Light. Amazing. But it, it just became the photographs that I sent you are really, but you can't really tell. There's so much color in here. There. It's like fabulous. That. So, anyway, there you go. Well done, okay, Robin. thank you. Well done. Woohoo. I hope you enjoyed. And I love the still life drawing. Thank you for sharing. Great color. You're welcome. As always. You have Thank such you. a terrific sense of color. You really do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Liz, Sunny. I I have to leave. Can I show my thing? Absolutely. All right. I'm trying to find you. Here you yeah. are. I also took some uh, Mexican things and drew a still life. Very nice. It, it's it's markers on watercolor paper. Are you going to paint the background? Otherwise, I would suggest cut this whole thing out and glue it on on something colored or patterned. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I'll do some painting of the background or okay, something. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Love this. I, I have to split though. Thank you so much. Love this. Send me a JPEG of the finished. Okay, we'll do. Love your colors. Love your shapes. The composition is strong. Not, Thank you. Not too much more, though. No, that's it. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, Lauren, are you still in the house? No. Okay. All right. Do we want to bring the camera around so that Robin can see what we've done here? Laura, please. Got some really interesting stuff here today. So most folks did the rubbing technique. Some people did painting. Laura's just getting the camera ready. Here, here we go. I love how it changes our point of view. Just Changing our focus changes our whole world view. So cool. 
So first up is Daniel's rubbings, collagraph prints, and you use pastel, correct, Dan? I think it's charcoal and pastel. Charcoal and pastel, okay. Very nice. Really strong images. Well done. And Tamara, look at this. A lot of movement and action in this really great, really great picture. Floral imagery. I love the dark swirly thing in the middle. Well done, Tamara. And Alice too, really fantastic. The, the black and white, very, very strong, powerful. It's reminding me of an artist, Alice, but I just, I can't think of who it is. It'll come to me. Maybe next week I'll be able to share with you. And Alice added paint to her prints. Isn't that like a Moreau? Yeah, a little bit, or Hunter Wasser, yep. I like both those references, but it's, it's not who I'm thinking of. I just, I'm not sure who it is. Sally, Sally's rubbing, really well done. It worked, worked well. And Janice, Janice, we're, we're done. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. And this is Shirley's rubbing. Really nice contrast to this piece. Really cool. Very cool. Janice, we're delighted you're here to, to celebrate with us. Thank you for stopping by. And Heather did too. No, no, celebrate the art that we're doing. We looked at a, a man named Marco yeah. da Silva, Brazilian American artist. Wow. These are great. And the, that's your plate. That's your collagraph plate. She used the plate that she created the texture from, she used it to make art. And this is the art. This is the print as well as the plate she made art from. Love it. Well done. And Alice opted to paint. She painted this fabulous toucan. Paint plus marker. Isn't it great? The happy toucan. This is a framer, Alice. You should get that baby framed. And Eileen painted. I love this image. Well done. Oh my gosh. Incredible. It's well, well done. It's an object she found in a hardware store. So Eileen read my directions too, and she was using found objects for a still life. Very cool metal object that she found. Very well painted too. Terrific. And Mika did a mixed media with the printing technique. Oh, she did two pieces. Is that, that's your plate and also your print. She painted on the print and she also used pastel. This is the print. This is the print with paint. This is Mika's work. And this is the plate. This is Mika's last class. We will see Mika online when she's available and in the right time zone. <laughs> She'll probably be asleep during our classes. 
And here's Judy. Well done. She did three works today. Amazing. Awesome. This is a plate. This is she used oil pastel, which is really terrific because you can literally scratch into it. Gorgeous. I love this is my favorite. This one. Love these colors. This one is with the soft pastel. Yeah, it worked. It worked well. This is oil pastel and this is a plate. Well done, everybody. Bravo. So this is a technique you can do anytime you want. All you need are scissors, paper, glue, and something soft to rub with. Pencil, crayon, oil pastel, soft pastel. And keep your eye on Marco Da Silva. I predict he's got a big future ahead of you. All right, well, it's a few minutes early. If you have any further thoughts about Marco Da Silva or any work that we did today, I'm not ready to say goodbye yet. So hang in there. Liz, I, I can't wait to come back to class and work with everyone and be closer to what they're doing. It, it's so exciting to see everybody's work. Well, Robin, really we can't amazing. wait for you to be back in person either. Come when you can. Yes, I will. See you soon, Daniel. Thank you. See you soon. Next week will be our final um, week celebrating Gay Pride Month. We will, of course, look at art by other gay artists throughout the year, but next week will be our final um, celebratory. Good, Janice. It's a good habit to start building on. Um, I'm not ready to say goodbye yet. We still have five minutes. Folks here are cleaning up. Those of you at home, if you need to leave, that's certainly okay. And maybe in a minute, I'll say goodbye to everyone. Uh, in the month of July, we are gonna be celebrating French speaking artists, which we did last year and it proved very successful. My favorite French speaking artist who actually lives here in Hoboken and I know quite well, Ibu, Ibu will be coming back. He will be doing a workshop in that final lesson in July. So those of you who can make it in person, I think you're gonna enjoy. Bye, Judy. Thank you for coming. Yeah, it's a really fun technique. Judy, is this your hat? Your hat. Judy. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to say goodbye uh, for this week's Art with Liz. And I look forward to seeing you all next week, Wednesday, 10 to 12 noon, right here at the Hoboken Public Library.